yeah, so this, the uh, construction manager, he came out and uh, he thought, I think the thinking was that, uh, that there must be an airlock in that, uh, in, that, uh, con in that heat exchanger. And so the floor wasn't uh, getting through it properly. Not enough cooling water mm -hmm. was getting through it. And so they figured that all they needed to do was, uh, you know, crank open a little nipple that was in basically an air bleed. Well, this guy went up to the uh, end of the heat exchanger. This is a big horizontal um, shell and tube uh, heat exchanger. And he was pulling on, he didn't have safety gear on. Uh, he was pulling on uh, what appeared to be just a, a little uh, nipple up on the kind of the top part of that uh, end of the heat exchanger. He was pulling on it and uh, it let go and he was, the thing was full of acid. Wow. And so he had misjudged, he didn't understand what he was pulling. As soon as the acid uh, came gushing out, he knew. And uh, so this chap, he, I believe he had glasses on, although I'm not sure about that. He would have had a hard hat on. So I, that, that was just um, standard uh, PPE for the site, you know, hard hat, safety glasses, uh, boots and so on. But he was just in his uh, street clothes, and Namibia is a very hot place. This was uh, Christmas time in Namibia. It was really hot. <laughs> and uh, so I think he had uh, short sleeves on, too. And uh, anyway, this, this acid wasn't under a lot of pressure, but it was under some pressure, enough that it came straight out, right at his face. He hit the shadows. He, he was... No, what no. happened? The showers were serviceable, I believe. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure they were serviceable. Um, what happened was he his reflexes were quick enough that his eyes closed, so he didn't immediately get acid into his eyes. He got it all over his uh, face and neck. I, I think he I think the hard hat shielded a little bit, face, neck, chest, and so on. He was, uh, you know, anybody that deals with acid is kind of, they kind of know what to do. Yeah. So he didn't open his eyes. He knew that he couldn't open his eyes. He was uh, shouting for help. This, part of this is, uh, is the story that was pieced together through this chap's uh, story and others who, who ran to help. Okay. So there was one fellow that was passing by just at the time and he ran to uh, help him. The thing that was closest at hand was the plunge bath, and there was water in it. <laughs> so in he went. <laughs> By this time, I got down there because I'd, I'd received word up in the uh, engineering uh, in the offices. There were trailers, you know, where we had our offices. The word went round like wildfire, and uh, so I tore down there. By the time I got there, he was in that bath. And people were uh, manually uh, splashing, splashing water on him, so there was water in the plunge bath, but we didn't we didn't have the uh, hose in there with the fresh water supply. Yeah. But at least there was water. Well, you know, I'm happy to say I, I I still think that it's kind of a miracle that that he survived and survived well. Yeah. He. Uh, you know, they quickly got a hose pipe uh, fixed up so they could do better than just using hands uh -huh. to splash water over him. Must have still ended up pretty scarred. He d well, it wasn't as bad as you might think. Uh -huh. I, I believe he had skin crafts. He was, he was first aid uh, took over as soon as they got down there. It was all handled pretty fast. This was in uh, 2003. So, you know, everything was well set up on that construction site. Uh, they were well resp ready to respond, you know. He was uh, flown out to, I guess, back to uh, Johannesburg. I'm not exactly sure where he went. And uh, kept in hospital for quite some time. And I believe he had some skin grafts. But at the end of the day, his sight was good. Mm -hmm. And uh, whatever skin grafting had to be done was turned out fine. 
So he lived to tell the tale. He wasn't severely scarred. He was burned. But uh, anyway, there you have it.